Sarah Obad, we hear from Horse Racing Nation, joined by fellow Horse Racing Nation family with David Levitch, otherwise known as the Paddock Prince. And you've been offering some pretty fire selections and analysis throughout the year. You had a great Keeneland meet. You have a Breeders' Cup package available. People can find you at picks.horseracingnation.com. And we have a tough race to discuss and that there was a pretty key defection in this Breeders' Cup sprint. Yeah, the sprint division this year is kind of lacking, to say the least. And when Jack Christopher was entered in the race, it looked like it had a real wild card to compete with Jackie's Warrior. Now, without Jack Christopher, it kind of goes back to um, – um, there's a couple wild cards in here, I would say, but I think the race lost a little bit of its steam. But Jackie's Warriors is 0 for 2 in the Breeders' Cup, but that was kind of some circumstances that didn't favor him. So I guess we'll try to figure out – maybe you're not trying to beat him, but we'll try to figure out who can beat him. Right. I think um, this is a race where I, I was intrigued and possibly leaning towards picking Jack Christopher. Now we won't see that bell of the Jacks. And I think it kind of sets up as a race for Jackie's Warrior where who else is going to go with him early? And I feel like he's kind of, it's his race to lose for himself because he's looking like lone speed in the sprint. Yeah, last year he had there was a super quick pace. There was a lot of speed horses. This year, if you look at the pace projectors, there's only one horse, and that's a seven horse super Ocho that even has a prayer of keeping up with him. And that was that would seem to me that would have to be real intent for him to really go for him to even keep up with Jackie's Warrior. The other thing is about Jackie's Warrior, he also drew very well in this race. He drew to the outside. So he's not going to be forced to – he's just going to be able to naturally cruise to the lead, it seems like, and see him having to be forced from the inside to get the lead. But, yeah, if you look on paper, there's a lot of dead closers, including the horse that won the race last year, Aloha West, who was way far back last year because of the pace. I don't think it'll be as back far back this year. But, yeah, it looks like Jackie's Warrior is going to be up there alone, unless Super Ocho from California puts any pressure on him um, and maybe Willie Boy, but Willie Boy seems pretty slow as well on paper. Right. I think that we're looking at a situation where, at least on top, it's a little bit boring, but we'll try to find something a little more interesting underneath, at least. And I guess uh, the wild card and intrigue now does kind of fall to the number two, Kamari, for Wesley Ward, who's opting to take on males in this spot instead of going in the field. And Mare Sprint, um, Wesley kind of citing that he wanted the six or long distance for her. So then the seven of the Fan Mare Sprint. Um, her last two numbers have been competitive, at least with a group like this. And Perhaps if you take out a horse like Jackie's Warrior, you're making a case for her to possibly win this race. Yeah, I was actually pretty interested in her before the scratch of Jack Christopher. Um, she's been involved in some slow paces early, but she's been finishing her races up so well. And she beat, she beat a very good horse, too, back in Frank's Rockhead, who we'll see in the Philly Mare Sprint, who has the best numbers in that race. So like you said, Ward did point her for this race. She's two for two at the distance. It's just, I don't know what kind of trip she's going to get in this race. The last couple of trips have been pretty soft while she has been running the second highest buyer figures in the race. I just, it's hard for me to imagine that she can chase Jackie's warrior. It's kind of like one of those um, conversations about getting taken out of your game and chasing a horse instead of getting to relax and run your race. So I don't know why you, I do agree with you. Obviously she has the two best figures in the race outside of Jackie's warrior and warded pointer for this race, knowing it's against boys. It's her home track. She always here trains here. She's got two wins over the track. It's just, this is a big step up for her from beating Frank's Rockhead and horses like lady rocket um, in her last two. And as you mentioned, this, the situation of the pace just doesn't really set up for a horse like this. And I think we've seen a lot over this Keeneland meet that those inside post positions, they're not really where you want to be in those uh, one-turn races that are sprint distances. It's just a huge disadvantage to be drawn towards the inside. And she is as post number two, although the rail obviously being one a little bit worse. With a horse, um, I guess since this is the next logical place to go with a horse like elite power who is really improving at the right time. I feel like a lot of people may categorize him as another horse that needs pace to chase and will be pace compromised. And as this uh, closer that we saw from him two starts ago in a pretty salty allowance race at Saratoga. But I think the, the intrigue with him and the Vosberg was that he could it a little bit closer if he had to and obviously he was just a much better horse than what he was facing in that race and for the grade two Vosbury that came up as a, a very light field and he you know basically had a paid workout in there but 
is it possible that Irad Ortiz Jr. is a little bit more aggressive with him, places him a little bit closer to a horse like Jackie's Warrior, and then maybe he's one that could possibly have a prayer? I don't know. This is actually a horse I'm pretty interested in, and I kind of agree with you about Irad. Irad is kind of underrated in the sense that he does send horses to get position if he needs to be. A horse like Annapolis in the Kumo Mile, he got him in perfect position. He's, he will send horses if he knows the race is devoid of speed. And he, while Lee Power did run on the lead, sort of on the lead last time out in the Vosburg, it was a slow half mile, but he did show the ability to sit close to the pace. And with no speed in the race on paper for a sprint race, I do agree with you that I do think Elite Power is going to be much closer to the pace than we than he was prior in his um, other three races. He has won four straight. I do wish he was a little faster on paper, but he does seem like the horse the up and comer. It's kind of like Cody wishes Cody's wish going into the um race he beat Jackie's Warrior. Bill Mott horse that had a bunch of wins in a row and then he ran that huge race and beat Jackie's Warrior. So it kind of gives me Cody's wish vibes. The horse he beat he did come back to run, I think it was a ninety seven buyer in the race last weekend at Aqueduct in a second place finish. So the race he won, it did get validated a little bit, not the highest numbers of Jackie's Warrior, but the race did get validated. And while I do think he's a little slow on paper, I think he's going to have a, he could be tactically placed well in here. And he is at least trending in the right direction where some of these other horses, not only have we seen kind of what they're made of and what their best is, and they may not even be bringing that into a race like this, but they are pace compromised and that we have a lot of closers in this field. Yeah, I know the pace is, it's going to be really interesting. Obviously, Jackie's Warriors is going to be on the lead, like we talked about, but it's going to be interesting to see how the ride feels like a real rider's race out of the gate. There's going to be, I, you could probably name three or four horses that haven't been super close to the pace that could be close to the pace just because they're, they all know to win the race, they're going to have to stay within reaching distance of Jackie's Warriors if they're going to beat him. Horses like Aloha West are coming in off layoffs, so there's a lot of, um, so a lot of question marks in this race for a Breeders' Cup. If you go through the other Breeders' Cup races, you kind of have a good feeling on what's going to happen in the race, in the pace scenario. But in this one, it's real hard to make after Jackie's Warrior, like we've said. Right. And I think, too, I mean, all those jockeys, they they are aware of what's at stake here as far as the purse and the prestige and um, the, the year-end honors for a lot of these horses – they are aware that they're going to have to do something to confront Jackie's warrior. Somebody is going to have to make a move. They they can't just let him cruise early. Now he may just be naturally faster than all of them. And even if they ask their horses, they might not have the horsepower to make it happen, but somebody's going to have to do something to take a crack at Jackie's warrior. Otherwise uh, you, you lose by being passive. You just don't have a shot to get past a horse like this. If you, if you don't soften him up early. Yeah, and I will say Jackie's Warrior is not an invincible horse. I mean, he's lost races before. I mean, he has good figures compared to the others. But if you look at who he's beat this year, he's beat Knee Deep and Snow, Sound Money, Let's Get Lucky, and Reinvestment Rest. So, I mean, I mean, while he's running good figures, he's had things his own way, which obviously could happen again today. But he's also facing much better horses today. And, and those horses and that, that I just mentioned, I mean, they would be 20 plus to one in here. To where now you have legit closers coming into the race, American Theorem, Aloha West, Elite Power, Kamari, all these horses that are legit um, horses that it's a tougher field for um, for him. But like I've, we've also said 20 times, the, the pace is just in his favor. But he hasn't – he's not invincible by any means. I don't think he's some horse that's – he's not like a flight line type horse. You look at it on paper, it's just like, oh, you can't beat this horse. But, um, so I think he, while he's going to be a heavy favorite, I don't think he's invincible by any means. I agree with you there. Do you think that he is going to be a shorter price than Flightline? That's a, no. I don't. I just the 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 Flightline. I mean, every time you turn on FanDuel TV or Twitter, it's just like it's a video of Flightline Fly taking a step or a video of Flightline training. It's like it's almost like you just. It's it's like it, they're not going to be able to get enough of I mean, even the casual fan at the Breeders' Cup and betting. It's just going to bet on Flightline no matter the price. I, I think Flightline will be the shortest price of the weekend. It, it's I think it's between him and K. Brock. All right. Well, I mean, I mean if somebody's going to upset Jackie's Warrior and Kamari or Elite Power, I, I would be pretty surprised um, as far as the rest of this field goes. Was there anyone else within this race that you give a shot to hit the board at a huge price or that you can make a case for? I think we'd be failed to mention if we didn't mention American Theorem. He he does come into this race with a 104 and a 101 buyer. 
He's shipping in from California. Laura Weber beat him last time, who's going to be one of the favorites in the dirt mile. Um, he, he is a really good horse. I don't – nothing against his trainer because I don't have the stats for Papa Padromo, but he doesn't – I don't know what his shipping stats are. I don't think he ever really ships horses out of California. So, I mean, if you look at his races, he didn't run well at Oakland when he shipped. So, that's the only time I can really see that he actually shipped out of California. So we'll see with him. I don't fully trust him, even though he does one of the horse one one of the few horses in this race that has ran one hundred plus buyers. But I just I don't know what kind of trip he's going to get like the rest of them. That's why this race is so tricky now with Jack Christopher because it's just hard to figure out what kind of trips these horses are going to get. Exactly. American Theorem last time too in the Pat O'Brien. I mean, Laurel River got a pretty sweet split between horses while American Theorem had to go pretty wide. I, I don't think he was going to beat Laurel River that day, but I think it's interesting that he opts for this sprint distance rather than going into the dirt mile because he has run further before. So I think it was a, an intriguing game of a, a chess where everybody kind of decided to place their horses, whether he wanted to duck one champion or another and finding the race that best fits their horse. Yeah, and I think this is the best opportunity for him to win a divisional title in this race because he did win the Bing Crosby two back, and that's what the Breeders' Cup is supposed to be for titles. And winning the Dirt Mile is probably they don't like they don't have a title for that. So I think that I have to give the Connections credit for actually running in a race that they could win a Sprint Championship title if they were to win the race. And then, I mean, Aloha West won the race last year, but he had everything his own way with the pace and the setup. He really hasn't come back the same horse this year. While he ran on 99 last time, he was an overnight stakes against Miles Ahead, who's an okay horse. But he just doesn't seem like the horse he was last year coming into the Breeders' Cup when he paired up three straight 100-plus buyers in that race. But I will see. It's a tough task off the layoff, but Catalano's done well in the Breeders' Cup, and he is the defending champion. I just It's hard for me to take a horse like that who got such a good setup last year and who hasn't really come back this year the same. Right. I've, I've never really been crazy about him. I know some some wise guy type uh, of characters had him last year in the Breeders' Cup sprint. But as you said, I mean, talk about getting everything to, to go your own way and really tripping out in a race like that. And I just don't see that happening here for him, though. If you like him, you're getting you know, a great price on a horse that won this race last year. So I understand if uh, if the love is there, but he's not for me. No, he's not for me at all. Um, if I'm one betting this race, I'm really just going to try to focus in on Jackie's Warrior and Elite Power and maybe a little Kamari because, I mean, if you're betting this race, it's going to be really hard for you to, I mean, unless you really like swallowing three to five shots and betting horses like that, which I don't really prefer. I think you really have to get some value in here with Elite Power and then I guess American Theorem. If he's actually 10 to 1 in this race, I think American Theorem would also, also offer some good value on exotic plays. All right. And then as far as your multis, is it a single and move on? No, it's not a single and move on. I'm actually I'm actually going to use Kamari Elite Power and Jackie's Warrior. I have a horse later on in the card that I absolutely love. So it's one of those things. It's this, If you look at this pick five, you have Jackie's Warrior, you have Flight Line, and then you also have Nest, who's not my single. But if that horse does happen to win, she's going to be she's going to be super over bet because of her following. So it's one of those things. I think you got to try to pick and choose what favorites you want to be. And I'm not against Jackie's Warrior, but I'm going to take a small, small chance against them and try to play against them in multi wager bets. But not a big stance. I'm only going to use a couple on here. All right. Well, if you want to see the the rest of David's opinions, you can follow those at picks.horseracingnation.com. Subscribe to the Paddock Prince Picks. Get that Breeders' Cup package because it sounds like you've got something juicy saved for later on in the card that might be a big price that'll afford you using a couple horses in a spot like this. But David, thank you for taking the time to talk about the Breeders' Cup Sprint with me for HRN. Thank you for having me. Good luck.